Okay, uh, welcome everyone to uh, another edition of the uh, DIMAP seminar. Uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Bartosz Walczak uh, from Jagiellonian University. Uh, so Bartosz is, is an expert in combinatorics and graph theory. Uh, so he did his PhD at uh, Jagiellonian University, following which he was a postdoc at EPFL uh, with Janos Park and uh, Georgia Tech with Tom Trotter. Uh, so Bartos has made several uh, major contributions to, uh, to graph theory already. The most famous, or at least one of the more famous ones being uh, a proof that uh, intersection graphs of line segments in the plane are not chi-bounded. And today he will speak about yet another exciting new development uh, giving uh, a new approximation algorithm uh, for path width on graphs of uh, small tree width. So Bartosz, uh, welcome to Warwick. And whenever you're ready, uh, feel free to start. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for this uh, uh, kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, what I'm going to present uh, is a joint work with uh, Karla Grönland, Gwenael Joche, and uh, Wojciech Nadara. Uh, this is work which started in uh, at a workshop uh, organized in Gutowy in Poland in 2019, uh, where uh, we gratefully acknowledge the support of the ERC Catacombs grant, uh, which which sponsors the workshop, and it is going to appear at uh, Soda next year, which is like in a month. Uh, so um, before. Uh, I tell you about what what these results are. I would like to make some uh, introduction um, to some basic definitions, which I'm going to need. Uh, so let me uh, tell you or, or, or remind the three uh, notions uh, from structural graph theory, basic notions, which are three decompositions and three widths. The second will be path decompositions and path widths. And I will also say a few words about tree depth because this is part of our motivation comes from, from some studies uh, concerning the tree depth. So um, let me start with, with a tree decomposition. Uh, so what is a tree decomposition of a graph? Uh, we have some kind of auxiliary tree and this tree is constructed on um, so-called bugs, which are subsets of vertices of, uh, of our graph. And the two conditions which need to be satisfied uh, for, uh, for these bugs is that uh, whenever we take a vertex of our graph, like a vertex V, and look which subsets this vertex belongs to, uh, then they form a subtree uh, like the box which contain our, our fixed vertex V uh, form a connected subtree of this, uh, of this tree decomposition. This is one, one of the two conditions. And the second condition is that whenever we have an edge in our graph, like an edge UV, uh, then this edge must be witnessed in some bug. So for instance, there must be another bug like this one, where if I have a, a vertex U in this bug and and this bug, then here there is a bug which witnesses the edge UV. So this is uh, this is a tree decomposition of a graph, and then tree width uh, is like like the width of the tree decomposition is the maximum size of a bug, minus one for some historical reasons, and then uh, okay, so the width width of the decomposition equals maximum size of a bug minus one. And then the tree width is the minimum width of a tree decomposition. Then we can define path width, which is very similar to that, except that our tree, which was here an arbitrary tree, is now required to be a path. So we have some kind of an auxiliary path, again, made on uh, like the vertices of, of, of the path are bugs 
uh, are so-called bugs, which are subsets of the vertices. So now for every vertex V, uh, like the bugs which contain the vertex V form some interval on this path, some connected subpath. And if there is another vertex U, for instance here, uh, and there is an edge UV in our graph. So this UV belongs to an edge, is an edge of our graph. And here also I take an edge of our graph. Then there has to be a bug which contains both, which contains both endpoints. And then the width of a path decomposition is the same as before, maximum size of a bug minus one. And the path width uh, is the minimum width of a path decomposition. And one more notion, which is connected to these, is a so-called tree depth. Uh, so in order to define tree depth, uh, we consider a different kind of decompositions. So we are constructing some kind of auxiliary tree uh, on the vertices of our graph. And now we require that every true edge of our graph uh, connects two vertices, which are in the ancestor descendant relation. So for instance, there may be an edge here, there may be an edge here, 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 and so on. But for instance, there cannot be an edge here. It's this kind of an edge is, is not allowed. And we want the height of this tree to be as small as possible. Okay, so if we compute the height of it as the number of vertices, like so, we want to minimize this height, which is as expressed in the number of vertices. So, for instance, this tree has height four, and 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 this is the definition of tree depth. So then we have the following inequalities. Uh, the tree width of a graph plus one, and uh, I'm writing this plus one because there is this minus one here in the definition, which uh, is uh, uh, sometimes maybe kind of annoying. Uh, this, the tree width, uh, sorry, um, the tree width plus one is at most uh, the path width of a graph plus one, which is at most the tree depth of the graph plus one, which is at most the three width of the graph plus one times the logarithm of the number of vertices. These are basically the uh, dependencies. I hope I didn't mess up anything. Sorry, the three depths shouldn't be without plus one. I, I hope it is correct now. Uh, yes, so these are, uh, these are the basic definitions which I need for this talk now. And uh, let me now speak about motivation for this work. So uh, one can consider some kind of forbidden minor characterizations of these, uh, of these notions. So for instance, it is uh, uh, well known that uh, uh, a class of graphs has bounded three widths, even only if it excludes some grid as a minor. Okay, a grid of some size. So one can consider that the grids, uh, which are graphs looking for like, like this, uh, are forbidden minor characterizations for three widths. And moreover, by the famous result of Chakuri and Chushoi, uh, this dependence here is polynomial. So, okay, the three widths of such a grid is uh, at least uh, the length of a side of the grid. Uh, and on the other hand, if, uh, on the other hand, if uh, we exclude uh, some grid, say k times k as a minor, then the three widths is uh, uh, is a polynomial in K. Uh, we can also have a similar uh, statement for path widths. So this is some, the kind of canonical obstruction for path widths uh, is a complete binary tree. So now somehow mm, inconsequently to what is below, 
I will be computing the height of the binary tree in terms of the number of edges. Okay, so this kind of a tree is a binary tree of, of height, uh, of height uh, two. So uh, this kind of tree has path width. The path width of this kind of tree is equal to the seeding of height over two. And on the other hand, it is known that if the path width, uh, uh, if the path width is large, then it must be witnessed by some uh, large binary tree as a minor. However, the dependence here is no longer polynomial. And it's easy to see that it cannot be polynomial because for instance, if you take the complete graph, then uh, you can only have a binary tree of uh, logarithmic size in it, okay? And for tree depth, the kind of canonical obstruction is just a long path. A tree depth is large if and only if there is there are long paths. Okay, so mm, there was a, a very interesting work at Soda in 2018. by Kawarabayashi and Rossman, uh, where, where they provided a kind of a polynomial uh, characterization of tree depth in terms of uh, excluded minors. So what they proved is that if the tree depth of the graph is of the order uh, k to the power five times log squared k, then one of the following three things holds. Either the tree width of the graph is at least k, or the graph contains uh, this binary tree of height k as a minor, okay? So let me make this drawing here. A TK will be a binary tree of height K, or this graph contains a path of length two to the power K. So, uh, Each so so what happens what happens here is that each of these obstructions leads tree width which is which is large like uh, tr sorry uh, tree depth which is at least k and on the other hand there is this polynomial dependence that if tree tree depth is polynomial in in k then either tree width is large or we have this uh, large binary tree as a minor or we have a long path. And uh, if we want to have uh, a forbidden minor characterization, then we just replace this uh, tree width condition by the, by the excluded grid condition. So then the, uh, the degree of this polynomial grows, but this only influences the degree of this polynomial. Okay. Uh, and they also asked the following question. So this is a question also from that paper, from that soda paper. Namely, is it true that if the path width of the graph is at least of the order, some polynomial in K, then is it true that the tree width is at least K or we have this TK minor? Okay, so now, uh, now there is like, like this third option is excluded because, because we have a condition on path width, not, not, on, the, uh, not on the tree depth, of course. So however long the path is, like, like the path width is, is one. So it wouldn't make sense to, 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 to give any, uh, anything about, about long paths here. So, uh, so the result which I'm going to present today uh, is a proof that, that this is indeed the case. So our, our result actually shows that if the path width is of the order, uh, say, uh, h times t, then the tree width is at least t, 
or we have a th minor. But before I proceed uh, with this, uh, let me show you some more motivation. So there was also another nice paper by, it is a paper from ISA uh, 2019 by Czerwiński, Nadara and Marcin Filipczuk. Uh, where they also consider this, uh, uh, like they, they strengthened the result of Kawarabayashi and Rossman. And so basically they proved that if the three depth is of the order, um, say L times H times T, then the three width is at least T or there is TH minor, or there is a path of length two to the power L. Uh, so looking at our result here and this result from ISA, a natural question to ask, which I'm going to, to give you this as an open problem already now, uh, is it true that if the tree depth is of the order of magnitude like P times L, then the path width is at least P or there is a path of length two to the power L. If that holds, then these two results, like our result and this, it would imply the result of Czerwiński, Nadara and Pilipczuk. Okay, and the bound which is not difficult to have in this question is that actually, let me, uh, this, is, this is known. So if the bound is like uh, worse by the factor of P. Okay. But now when we are um, speaking about this paper of Czerwiński, Nadara and Filipczuk, uh, they also consider the problem of three depth approximation. So uh, let me write it on the next page. Uh, also this ISA 2019 paper, they provided an approximation algorithm for three depth with approximation ratio um, of the order. Here, this order depends, uh, uh, depends on the three width. This is three width times logarithm to the power three over two times three width. Okay. On the other hand, there is a well-known result uh, Mm, by, it is a result from Stock 2005 by Feige, Hajia, Kai, and Lee, that there is an approximation algorithm or three width with ratio, which achieves, which achieves the approximation ratio of uh, square root of logarithm of the three width. This is a very classical result now. Uh, so our result, which is, uh, which, which evolved from this work, which was initially, uh, which was initially motivated by, uh, by the question of uh, Kawarabayashi and Rossman, is that we provide an approximation algorithm for path width 
with approximation ratio, which again, like in the result, uh, in, in this result from ESA 2019, which also depends only on the three widths and this approximation ratio is a three widths uh, times square root of the logarithm of the three widths. And this is like the first approximation algorithm for path widths, which depends only on the three widths. Now we are not aware that of, of, of any result of this kind uh, to, be, to be known before. Okay. Uh, Bartek, can yes. I apologies for, so, so I just wanted to clarify how this approximation ratio do that. So is it like if you have a general graph of some trivi, when this is your approximation ratio, or you you given a three day composition, and then based on the three day composition, the approximation ratio is as given. Okay. So if you are given a three day composition, then you this this factor disappears. Then right. the, with a given three day composition of uh, say of width t, the approximation ratio is just big O of t. Mm -hmm. However, if we are not given the 3D composition, then the first step is to approximate the three widths using this, mm -hmm. using the stock algorithm. And this gives this, like, like this is why this uh, square root of log of the three widths mm -hmm. appears here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is the same for the ESA 2019 algorithm or? Uh, sorry, I cannot tell you. I don't know that algorithm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me so let me now write uh, like the result in detail, which I'm going to show you today. Uh, here's our here is our main theorem. Uh, for every graph G, for which the three width is at most t minus one. So I'm going to assume that we have a three decomposition with bugs of size at most t. Uh, there is a number h, a natural number h, with the following two properties. The first property is that the path width of G is at most t times h plus one. And the second property, uh, let me call it this way, the graph G uh, has an h witness. So now I'm going to explain what this, what this h witness is. Uh, I told you that, uh, uh, there is this uh, canonical witness uh, for for large path widths, which is uh, uh, which is a complete binary tree. That's this 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 th. So okay, it's not exactly the complete binary tree, but some minor of complete binary tree, which which we can also think of as a subdivision of such a tree. Okay, this is a, this is a something which can be found in graphs of uh, of. Uh, uh, of large of large uh, path widths, and this is what uh, Kawarabayashi and Rosman were asking about. And our H witness will actually uh, it's some generalization of that, so it will contain such a subdivision of such a tree. Uh, however, our H witness will be somewhat stronger. So uh, the path width of such a tree itself is only H over two, and the path width of our H witness will be exactly H. So like we gain a factor of two in the approximation ratio. This is, this is how you can think about it. Uh, okay, so I will tell you in a moment what this H witness is. Let me just write that in. Particular G headline. And moreover, there is a polynomial time algorithm to compute them. Uh, by to compute them, I mean to compute this number h, which appears here, 
to compute a path decomposition which witnesses this and to compute this H witness. And also in particular, if we can compute this H witness, then also we can find this, uh, this TH minor. And the polynomial time algorithm, uh, it is not FPT like that it depends on this, uh, on this T um, as a parameter. No, it is, it is not a parameterized algorithm. It is uh, just a, a real polynomial time algorithm, which is polynomial in the size of the input also in the size of the tree decomposition, which is given here as part of the input. Okay, so in order to clarify what this theorem is, I need to define uh, this H witness. So the definition is um, inductive. So a zero witness is just a single vertex. So every graph which contains some vertex, it will have a zero witness. So now what is, what is H witness for H at least one? Uh, it is a structure which contains three H minus one witnesses. So here we have these, these three things are H minus one witnesses here. And moreover, okay, by induction, these witnesses will be connected. This, this is something that, that we will maintain. These witnesses will be some connected subgraphs. And moreover, they have the property that uh, for every pair of these witnesses, for instance, if I take, if I take this one, uh, sorry, if I take this one and I look at this one, then in the, in the whole graph, there is a path which connects this one with this one and avoids this one. So there is a somewhere here, a path which looks like that. And then there is a path which could connect some vertex from here, from some vertex with some vertex of here. And there is a path which connect, connects say the same vertex here. It can go somewhere like that with some vertex here. Okay, this is an H, this is an H witness. And these paths are parts of those H witness. Okay, is that clear what I mean here? Good, so, uh, so let me uh, like show you two properties of these H witnesses. The property one, is that an H witness contains uh, a TH minor or a subdivision of TH because for the for the graph of maximum degree three it, this is the same and somehow I I prefer thinking about about subdivisions uh, so like the proof goes by induction of uh, over this construction, which 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 is here, and uh, we need to prove something slightly stronger. Namely, we need to prove that if we have an age witness, suppose that this is an age witness, and select any vertex, like we, whichever vertex we 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 choose here, there exists a TH minor or, or a subdivision of this TH somewhere here. It can be subdivided with the additional property that the root of it can be connected to the vertex V by a path inside the witness. And this path uh, does, does not interfere with the rest of the subdivision. And it, it is allowed that this vertex V is the same vertex as the root here. Okay, this, this is allowed. So, yeah, so I want to maintain this kind of property by induction. And this is, this is easy because if we have now this uh, inductive construction, so three, uh, three H minus one witnesses, we have our selected vertex V, for instance, it is somewhere here. 
then okay uh, there is a path which con which connects this this to this one avoiding the third one there is a path which connects uh, this to this one avoiding the third one okay those maybe let me draw them like this way now the witness itself is connected so i can extend these paths here another case is that actually the uh, this uh, blue path and this green path uh, they connect outside this uh, h minus one witness containing v but but then there is no change like like it's it's the same and now i'm applying the induction hypothesis here so here there is this binary tree here there is this binary tree for instance which looks like that and 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 the path which connects this to that vertex right so this is how we grow the binary tree and uh, mm, the second property of the h witness is that the path width okay an h witness has path width at least h. And uh, the reason for this is that, uh, okay, uh, let me just sketch the reason for that. Uh, if we have, uh, suppose we have a path decomposition of such an h witness, and again, the, the proof is by induction. So we already know that for all these uh, three h minus one witnesses, which are here, uh, for all of them, the path width is at least h minus one, which means that in our path decomposition, uh, there needs to be a bug which contains h vertices of this. There must be, there has to be another bug which contains h vertices of this, and there has to be yet another bug which contains h vertices of this. Right. So if we look at this path decomposition, suppose that here we have a bug which contains h vertices from that part. Uh, here we have a bug which contains h vertices of that part. And say here we have a bug which contains h, h vertices of that part. But then there is this path. This path here avoids the uh, yellow h minus one witness. So this path must be somewhere here in the path decomposition while avoiding it. It cannot pass through those through the vertices from the yellow, uh, which, which are in this bug from the yellow H minus one witness. So this path will add at least one more vertex to this bug here. And this is how the path width grows. Okay. So if we know that an H witness has a path with at least H, and we look at this theorem here, then we see that it gives this approximation algorithm, which I was, which I was talking about, right? So if we are given a tree decomposition of, uh, of width uh, at most T minus one, uh, then uh, the fact that G has an H witness means that the path width of G is at least H, and on the other hand, we return a path decomposition uh, of size uh, t times h, more or less. Right. So we get we get a t approximation, but provided that the tree decomposition is given, if we also need to approximate the tree decomposition, then there is this additional factor of the square root log uh, square root log t. Okay. Uh, is that clear? So let me proceed with the proof of, of this theorem. Uh, I'm not sure that I will be able to, uh, to show you how the algorithm works, but at least I would like to show you why such, uh, such a thing exists. So, uh, so let me show the proof here. And for the proof, uh, I will need the following, um, uh, the following idea. So we are, we are given this tree decomposition. 
which looks somehow. And now uh, a full subtree of a tree decomposition uh, will be uh, defined in such a way that we take an edge, direct it in some way, and everything that is pointed by an edge, this is a full subtree. Okay, so let me call it a full subtree. So now if we have such a full subtree, uh, then I want to define the graph of that subtree. So the graph of that subtree is the subgraph of G induced on all vertices of G that occur only in bugs in the subtree S. Okay, so I'm taking the union of these bugs here. Uh, how, how you can look uh, how you can look at, at the set of vertices. I'm, I'm looking at the union of these bugs, but I also subtract the content of this bug here. So I'm looking only on the vertices which 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 appear which appear in these uh, uh, in the bugs in the subtree S, and don't appear in any other bugs. Okay. Uh, so now the proof. And the proof of this result, uh, which was here, goes by induction. So the first step of the induction, let's let's uh, do it by induction on the size of the uh, of, on the size of the tree decomposition. So uh, when we have just one bug in the tree decomposition, then then this is easy because we actually need to, uh, to, to verify whether we should take h equal zero or h equal one. If we take h equal one, then the path which is trivial because we just take the bug, uh, which, which is in the tree decomposition. If we want to take h equal zero, then we can do it uh, if, the, um, uh, if the graph is a collection of paths. Because whenever the graph contains uh, a vertex of degree three, or when it contains a cycle, then it already has a one witness, right? Like from this definition of zero witness, we can also see what a one witness looks like. So for instance, a vertex of degree three gives a one witness, but also a, a cycle, any cycle, not, not necessarily a three cycle, also gives a one witness. Okay, so, so the base, is, uh, is clear, so let's do the induction step. So for the induction step, uh, I want to define K. Uh, let, let, let K be maximum for which uh, some proper full subtree uh, of, of our tree decomposition T. So this is our tree decomposition T. Uh, for which, uh, let me write it this way. For some proper full subtree S of T, the graph GS has a K witness. So we look at the all proper uh, proper full subtrees and those graphs which are uh, which are on those subtrees. So for those graphs, the tree decomposition, we just forget about the rest of the tree and and restrict that our tree decomposition to this blue part here. Right? This this will be our tree decomposition of, of of GS. So it is smaller, and we want to take a maximum k for which for which there is such a k witness. So now we can consider two cases. Uh, so we distinguish uh, two cases with respect to whether, okay, so now let's look at the set of those subtrees which witness this K. Okay, so 
we consider subtrees S uh, for which GS has a K witness. So one possible case is that in our tree decomposition, maybe let me draw it like this as I was drawing it so far. In our tree decomposition, we have two disjoint subtrees like that. Okay, but if that doesn't happen, then it means that uh, uh, any two subtrees has a common vertex, any two of these interesting subtrees have a common vertex. And because uh, subtrees of a tree have the Halley property, that means that there exists a vertex which is a common, which is a common vertex to all those subtrees. So then if we look at such a vertex, which is a common vertex of all those subtrees, assuming that, th that this doesn't happen, and we look at all subtrees which are connected to that vertex, there may be a lot of them, but all those subtrees now, they are not among these. So they don't contain a K, K witness. And if they don't contain a K witness, then we have a smaller path decomposition for them by induction. Okay, so for, for the graphs for the graphs G on those subtrees, we have a smaller path decomposition. So what we can do now, we can take, for instance, a path decomposition for this subtree. Let, let it look like that. And then add this bug, I can add this bug to all bugs of that path decomposition. It is just added here. Okay, and then let's say that here we have another graph on this subtree, like, like this GS for, for that subtree S, there's another path decomposition. Again, I add, I add this, this let's call it B, right? So this is B, B. I add B to all of them and I concatenate those path decompositions. So this gives a path decomposition which has, uh, which is which which has width larger by t, okay? So so we add t to the path decomposition to, to the size of the path decomposition, and on the other hand, we increased by one the size of the witness which we have, because here I took k maximum uh, for which. Uh, for which uh, for which there is a witness, and for those subtrees considered here, there was no k witness. Okay, so if we look back at this at, at this theorem, if I increase uh, the size of the witness by one, uh, and if I increase the size of the path decomposition by t, then the induction goes through. But this was under the condition that something like this doesn't happen. So now let's see what what uh, what happens if we have two disjoint subtrees uh, in our collection, which we consider here. So in, in that collection where where we have K witnesses. So uh, I'm going to take from from our tree decomposition. I'm going to look at the subtree which consists of all those edges such that on both sides of that edge, so for, for, both, for both these subtrees here and, and S, S1 and S2, I'm, I'm taking this edge to our set of edges if G S1 and G S2 contain, uh, contain a K witness. So that will be some connected, that will form some connected subtree of our tree decomposition. And then there will be some other parts which will connect to that subtree. They can connect at the leaves. They can connect somewhere here and so on.
Okay, it, 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 it can look like this. Uh, okay, so now there is something which I still need to add, which I, uh, which is, which is a condition uh, that I require from this tree decomposition. This cannot be that the tree decomposition which I'm working on. It cannot be an arbitrary tree decomposition. This needs to be a tree decomposition, which satisfies the property that for every a full subtree. Okay, let me write it here. Additional property that we need for every full subtree as the graph gs is connected okay but why 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 can we have that so suppose that in our tree there is some subtree s and here there is the, the there is the rest of the tree but suppose that here there is some subtree s where this graph which is induced on the vertices which appear only in the bugs in s suppose that it is disconnected then what i can do is I can split this graph into connected components. And instead of this one subtree, which appears here, I can make, I can add, sorry for that. I can add those connected components as a separate subtrees. For each of the connected, connected component, I can have a separate subtree. And that will be also a correct tree decomposition. Okay, so this is this is a, uh, an additional property which we can have without loss of generality. Uh, so, so with that property, I'm going to consider two cases. One case is that this tree. Let me call this core, like the the tree which consists. Which consists of those selected, of those selected edges, such so that on both sides there are these large, uh, these large uh, subtrees containing a K witness. So one case is that this is actually a path, and if this is a path, and each other tree just connects to this path, and we know that the graph. Uh, GS for each of these tr trees S here, it does not have a K witness. So for, for those graphs, mm, the number K is, uh, is smaller, then I can do the same kind of construction which I did here. Like a very similar kind of construction. So uh, we start with that path decomposition which is which is which is which is this path, which is this path here. And now, whenever there is a tree, uh, sorry, whenever there is a tree which connects to that, uh, and it has some path decomposition of smaller width, then I am going to add this bug to this path decomposition. And in some sense, put, put this part here in the sequence. Okay, they may, there may be more trees, uh, there may be more trees connecting to this. So there, there will be more of these paths extended which are put in this place. I will just concatenate them, okay? And then if there is another tree which connects to here, then it will have some path decomposition. To this path decomposition, I add, I'm add. i adding this bug, this bug B prime and so on. And it will be, this thing will be merged into our path decomposition at this place. And so on. And, and if we did this kind of uh, replacement for each of those, for each of those bugs here, we will construct uh, a path decomposition of the width that we want, exactly as in the previous case. Okay. Uh, so this was case one. So the other case 
case two is that actually uh, the score, it doesn't look like that. Uh, so if the score doesn't look like that, then it means that in this score, there are, for instance, it can look like this, but there are at least three leaves. Okay, and if there are at least three leaves, then by the way how the score was defined, these are large subtrees. All of them contain a K witness. Here we have a K witness. Here we have a K witness. Here we have a K witness. And now by this assumption, which we have here, that these graphs G, S are connected, then for instance, I know that for this full subtree, this gives a connected graph. And that connected graph fully avoids the graph which, which we defined for that subtree, which contains a K witness. Okay, so if this, is, if this is connected, then it means in particular that there is a path connecting these K witnesses here. And analogously, there is a path connecting these K witnesses and there is a path connecting, connecting these K witnesses. Those paths can interfere with each other, we don't care, but, but we have this uh, one larger witness. So actually for this case, we return, we construct a witness uh, with parameter K plus one. And now if we have a witness with parameter K plus one, then if we want to construct a path decomposition, let me go here, uh, then the, this path decomposition can be larger even by T, can be, can be even larger, right? right? So we can, use, we can use exactly the same construction that we used here, except that now these trees uh, will have a path, path width uh, with parameter K, and we want a path with, for parameter K plus one. So we just take a, any bug as our B and, uh, and do this construction to get a path width for which, which, is, which is good for the parameter K plus one. Uh, okay, and this, so this is, this is how the induction, uh, this is how the induction uh, goes here, this, and, and this completes the proof. Uh, I, I hope uh, I hope I convinced you. I hope I, I hope I convinced you that this completes the proof for this theorem. And uh, so now, if we have this algorithmic statement, uh, let me just let me just uh, let me just finish with a few words about this algorithmic statement. Uh, the problem is that the proof which I showed you here doesn't algorithmize well, because, uh, for instance, if you try to do some kind of dynamic programming on the structure of subtrees, then you end up uh, having a sub problem for every connected subtree of the original tree. This is a, uh, this is a um, exponential number of sub problems. So in order to avoid, uh, in, order, in order to avoid this situation, uh, we can, for instance, do some kind of bottom-up approach on the uh, on the tree uh, on the tree decomposition. But now, if we do the bottom-up approach on the tree decomposition, we don't really have this additional property for all full subtrees which were considered here. Because if we, if we do the bottom-up approach with respect to a rooted tree decomposition, then the definition of a full subtree, it changes. Uh, we, we look only at, uh, mm, for full subtree, we look only at rooted subtrees. So we look at those subtrees which are defined for edges, like these edges, but only those which go down in the, in the rooted tree decomposition. Uh, and the fact that, um, and the fact that uh, that we don't have this property brings a lot of additional difficulties that we need to overcome. Uh, overall, we are able to provide uh, a dynamic program which uses uh, the number of subproblems, which is of the order n log n. 
where n is the size of the graph. Uh, but I think uh, I cannot say anything more about, about how we do it uh, because, because my time is up. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Bartosz, for the very nice, very nice talk. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or also you may use the chat. Uh, while we wait, uh, if I may, so one of the big questions that I'm aware of in this direction is uh, the existence of a constant factor approximation for tree depth, uh, whether in polynomial time or even, uh, even if you take single exponential uh, time in the value of the tree depth. Uh, so do, do you think uh, this approach could have any uh, implications on that question? For tree depth, uh, I don't know, but I don't see why why would it uh, why would it have? So here we don't have any constant approximation, right? It's still mm -hmm. approximation which depends on the on the uh, size of the tree decomposition. Yes, but uh, this is for part with which is a more general. Uh, uh, structure. So tree depth, in principle, it is it should be easier, which is why. Uh, okay, um, I, I I don't I don't know. Actually, I don't even know how this uh, how this ISA approximation algorithm works. So. Okay. Mm, no, I, any I, other? Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so are there any other questions? Uh, I don't see anything on the chat. Uh, if not, uh, let's thank Bartosz again for the very nice talk. And I look forward to seeing you all at the next Demat seminar. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bartosz. Thank you too.